In our hour, on March 18, 2020, we recorded an incident of a Nigerian male, 38 years old, of a Kiti origin resident in Ibadan, who tested positive to COVID-19. The confirmed case came into close contact with a 27-year-old male American who was visiting Nigeria from Richmond, Virginia, USA, in the company of his caregiver, a Nigerian female age 31 of Ekiti origin, while conveying them around their holiday destinations. The American male and his Nigerian female caregiver arrived in Nigeria on 3rd of March 2020 through the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, and were confirmed to have stayed for 10 days in Ibadan Oil State before arriving at Due Kiti on 13th March 2020. A day after their arrival, the American male fell ill and he was taken to a private hospital where he was referred to a tertiary institution. Unfortunately, he died from complications of his illness, according to the medical report rendered. The state task force on COVID-19 was alerted and samples were taken from the American male as well as his two companions. The test for the male chauffeur came back positive. The test for the female caregiver came back negative, while the test for the American male was inconclusive. The state team has taken fresh samples from the female caregiver and the male driver to repeat the test at the Center for Disease Control designated laboratory. In line with the Nigerian Center for Disease Control protocols, the Ekiti State Task Force on COVID-19 has already quarantined the confirmed case on admission in the State Isolation Center. While the caregiver who tested negative is presently under observation in self-isolation. While the result of the American mail came back inconclusive, the Center for Disease Control's protocol dictates that an inconclusive result must be handled as though it were positive. We have therefore taken the necessary precautions and approvals related to burials and disposal of such bodies. In the past 24 hours, the Akiti State COVID-19 Task Force has taken the following actions in our case management protocol. We have made contact with the United States Embassy to brief them on the demise of their citizen. We have also spoken with the mother of the deceased to empathize with the family and are working with the embassy and the family on the burial arrangements of their loved one. Our contract tracing team have identified 42 direct and indirect contacts of this imported AKT index case, most of whom came in contact with him in the process of managing the illness, which took him to hospital. None of the contacts show any symptoms and are all being observed under self-isolation. In the next 14 days, the samples will be collected and sent to the Center for Disease Control for testing and we will update the public on the results and any further developments as we receive them. The Kitty State Isolation Center has been activated since the confirmation of the positive case who is currently on admission there, though he is very stable and showing no symptoms as at this morning. Basic amenities to make the stay comfortable has been provided, and medical equipment that may be needed for the symptomatic management of positive cases are being provided. For seamless coordination with federal structures, I held meetings with the Honorable Minister of Health Dr. Sage Haniri, the Director General of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwezu, and the Coordinator of COVID-19 Response for Nigeria, Dr. Sonia Liu, to brief them on the Ekiti Index case and our preparedness, capacity, and requirements to successfully contain the spread of the virus. The meetings were also to ensure a coordinated national 
response, a joined up strategy at the level of the Nigerian Governors Forum, especially for states contiguous to Ekiti. I also met with the directors of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as the Damgote Foundation, to solicit their support in our effort to contain this global pandemic. As I speak, WHO and UNICEF teams have arrived at Ekiti and are collaborating with Ekiti state teams by providing the task force with technical support needed to ensure a thorough contract tracing and case management process. We are also getting adequate support from the Center for Disease Control on appropriate sampling and laboratory services. A team has already arrived from NCDC to join the other partners in boosting our case management capacity. Ekisikete, our resolve to respond promptly to this global pandemic as a state gave birth to a 40% task force on 2nd of March 2020, a few days after the index case in Nigeria was identified in Ogun State. Our first strategy in preparedness was sensitizing all relevant sectors, especially our medical and health practitioners, and providing them with personal protection equipment. Appreciably, the concerned health practitioners were able to make use of the appropriate framework to alert the state task force when they suspected an infection in the patient. By their commitment and dedication to service, they succeeded in alerting us to the presence of an invisible, stealthy, silent, but very deadly enemy in our peaceful state. We're very grateful to our medical practitioners for being a very efficient and selfless first line of defense against a global scourge. I want to especially recognize and thank the medical team at the tertiary hospital who did everything professionally possible to save the life of our index case, albeit futile, and who are now in self-isolation as part of the contact tracing protocol. COVID-19 is most deadly because of its ability to pass silently from one infected person to others through virus-laden droplets of bodily fluids for up to 21 days before showing any symptom. It has been proven that one infected person can transfer the virus to up to 406 people within 30 days and to 164,000 people in 60 days. That is why it must be contained and urgently too. Now that we are aware of its presence in our midst, we must leave no stone unturned to make a Kitty State COVID-19 free. We must combat and curtail its spread by ensuring our people are actively involved in governmental efforts to fight this global pandemic. While the world frantically searches for a cure, our best and only defense is prevention. Therefore, to prevent its capacity for exponential transfer in a Kitty state, we must enforce all preventive measures as advised by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, especially social distancing and hand washing in an aggressive and well-coordinated manner. To this effect, therefore, I hereby direct the following. In line with the directive that has been issued by the federal government, all public and private schools and institutions in Equity State are to close down from Monday, 23rd March, 2020. All public gatherings of more than 20 persons are prohibited from today, Friday, 20th March, 2020. This include religious gatherings, e.g. worship, congregational prayer services, night vigils, house fellowships, NASFAT meetings, and social gatherings. Examples, burials, weddings, family meetings, and parties of any kind, political gatherings, rallies, congresses, ward meetings, 
nightclubs, bars, beer joints, NYC community development meetings. All non-essential workers in private and public sectors are encouraged to work from home with effect from Monday, 23rd March, 2020. This includes civil and public servants from grade levels 12 and below, except essential services workers like health workers, caregivers, social welfare officers, fire service officers, emergency response officers, security guards and watchmen in public institutions. Government officials are advised to keep their phone lines open as they may be required to come to the office when needed. On public transportation, no overloading of passengers in public vehicles will affect from today. Commercial vehicles must ensure only one person is sitting in the front seat with the driver and not more than three passengers on a row in the back seat. Al-Qaeda's must carry only one passenger each to minimize close contact as much as possible. Our citizens must wash their hands regularly with liquid soap, under running water, multiple times every day to avoid virus transfer. All public places must provide hand washing implements at the entrance and exit of their facility. A running tap with safe drainage or a veronical bucket with running water and liquid soap or hand sanitizers must be made available at motor parks, eateries, banks, shops, offices, and any place with significant human traffic to encourage frequent hand washing. Our market men and women must practice hand washing under running water with liquid soap at least six times a day in their stalls. This is to minimize the transfer of virus picked up in the process of buying and selling. Citizens visiting markets must ensure they wash their hands with soap under running water as soon as they leave the market before they get home. Unnecessary travels in and out of Ekiti State are hereby discouraged at this time. While we cannot totally shut down the state, we must minimize unnecessary traffic, especially from out of state, so we can protect our citizens from further importation of the virus and also protect the rest of the country by minimizing the exportation of any virus which may be present in Ekiti State. All these directives are until further notice. Executive, while these measures may appear excessive, we cannot afford the spread of a debilitating virus like COVID-19 in our state. Apart from its alarming mutation and mortality rate, especially on senior citizens who constitute a significant part of our demography in Ekiti, its capacity to destroy the economy of a community is very lethal. As someone has said, the risk of doing too little is unimaginable. While the risk of doing too much in this circumstance is completely irrelevant, it is thus safer to act excessively in abundance of caution than to act inadequately and live with scary consequences. From Monday, 23rd March 2020, the Equity Task Force will give regular updates at 2 p.m. every 48 hours at the Emergency Operations Center, Ministry of Health and Human Services, State Secretariat, Adu Equity, to keep the public informed of new developments and the actions we're taking to make Equity State safe and COVID-19 free. I strongly appeal to residents to continue to take self-preventive measures by washing their hands with soap and water or using hand sanitizers, covering their mouth with disposable tissue or into their curved elbow when coughing or sneezing, observing social distancing by avoiding crowded gatherings and to alert the authorities of any suspected case by calling the emergency number 
0.1112. Or the numbers that we've made available, 0906-297-0434, 0906-297-0435, and 0906-297-0436. Though this may appear daunting, I encourage you all to keep faith. Take all necessary preventive actions to protect yourselves and families and avoid rumors and misinformation, especially on social media. We're renowned for being a resilient people and together with God on our side, we can fight, beat and banish this COVID-19 pandemic from Ikiti State. But the containment begins with you and me. Alale Kiti, Ajakwao.